pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. We're going to have a presentation here just as soon as we get the Zoom up and running. Okay, I just want to make sure. Until they're ready to start that, we might as well keep going. Uh, so we need a motion to open a public hearing on no left turn on Davenport Place. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's open for public comment. You got something? I have a question. Why are you just restricting it for certain hours? Once it makes 24 hours a day, it can't turn left. Who's going to have a guard out there watching from 7.30 to 9.30 or whatever time you got from 2.30 to 5.30? That's ridiculous. They should have a guard out there watching it. It doesn't make any sense. 24 hours a day, no left turn, they're obstructing traffic. UPS, you've never seen them turn across traffic, turn into traffic lane and keep on going. They have to do three right turns, turn around, they get in a circle. But the only time it's really a problem is early in the morning and the afternoon. You stuck up no, no entry sign by a sign temple, do not enter sign. That went up really fast. You know, I wasn't going to go in that way. Holy crap, I can't get in that way anymore. You know, to the voting area. Yeah. It just makes sense. Make it make a law, make it 24 hours a day, not certain hours a day, because the signs on Trinity S and no parking, stopping, or whatever. That's I parked it. up and down the road during school. And I have no kids, so I don't care. But I'm saying those, those signs might have turned down because nobody listens to them. Nobody reads them. I'm going to turn them another way, turn them, another way, turn them backwards. Because they can't read. You know, nobody enforces that. In my, I'll, I'll raise a question based on your question. So let's say it says 8.30 to 10.30. This is more directed at our attorney. And they argue, well, it was 8.29. Is that going to be an issue for the judge? It's a proof matter. Of course that would be an issue. So maybe, Mr. <coughs> Avalon, you have a good argument? I don't have any action to grind. I have no children. But you make it restricted certain hours, you know. Make it 24 hours a day, can't turn left. So we we'll have to go around, go around the uh, park area and come back down. I think he's right one second. But the big thing on this, Henry, is we're trying to alleviate the early morning, early afternoon crop problems. You still have traffic coming out of the, the time during the day. Throughout the day, nobody seems to have any problems up there. I mean, I go in there on a regular basis because I have to go to the district office. Yeah, and no worries. There are other signs all around town to say certain days, certain times of day, stop. Point in case, Trinity Ave, Butterscotch House, that area, says no parking, stopping, and standing. Certain hours. You go, in, you go to those certain hours, and the people are lined up to drop the kids off, pick the kids up, and it says do not pick the kids up here. Nobody obeys it. So why make why put the sign up there? You're just wasting time. Make it 24 hours a day or make it nothing. That's a or put a, put, a, a put a guard shack up there with, with somebody with a a PB gun can take care of it. You know, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. You make all these, make all these regulations, and you don't, you don't, then you don't enforce them. That's what I run for. That's what I run for office. Any else on that? Anybody? Okay, let's move on to uh, our Zoom uh, meeting with Jewel Assets. Should lose them. Hi. Hi, I can't hear you great. I will be as loud as possible. Um, I have a presentation that I go through, so I'll have slides. I don't know how big I am. I, I don't set iPad. Um, I just appreciate you guys making this work virtually. Um, so I will try and go through that nice and quick. I'm going to go share screen. All right. That's her. There we go. So I'm Alexia, thank you again uh, for having me. Thanks to uh, Tim for communicating via email um, and setting this up. I do know you guys have a lot on your agenda, so I will uh, be as respectful of your time as I possibly can, talking real, real fast. Um, and we'll get through this just so you guys have an idea of some of the options through Joel. Um, I work on this side of things, basically talking to those who are considering community choice aggregation and considering working with Joel from the very, very beginning um, through to more of the execution, educating the public, things like that that are all part of the process. 
So we'll go through all of those. Um, so our mission is to enable communities, much like yours, um, to achieve your sustainability objectives. So that might include something like community choice aggregation, which you know involves renewable energy. Um, but we also like to work as an advisor for uh, other projects. We've spoken with folks about things like electric vehicle charging stations and so on. So we're most known as being a community choice aggregation administrator, uh, but we also you know are happy to offer insight and be that advisor where necessary to help you with whatever those objectives may be because I realize it comes in many shapes and sizes within different communities. And uh, our primary vision, uh, you know, main objective deals with clean energy uh, and making that affordable, affordable for everyone. Uh, typically, if you hear about initiatives with uh, utility companies, they may offer a renewable energy option, but it can be quite a bit more expensive than what their standard offer is. In addition, if you try and you know uh, look into contracts with third-party energy supply companies, similar deal. Uh, it might seem really great at first, but typically uh, it ends up being a little bit more expensive in the long run, or a lot more expensive if there's complicated contracts and things that are difficult to deal with. So we're trying to bait a lot of that, achieve these sustainability goals, reduce your carbon footprint within your community, access uh, community power, which is the primary thing we're going to talk about uh, for the local scale. And of course, many of these reflect goals that are made by the state from New York scale of things. And just taking actionable steps for So I'll talk about the next goals, uh, next steps in mind, um, should you, you know, decide to pursue CCA and how we can help you out with that and further down the road, how we can continue to help. So over 150 communities in New York have enabled CCA, and that means they've taken the step of passing a local law, which does have to be done in order to move forward. This doesn't mean that there are 150 communities that you know have active programs. Uh, Jewel has about 50 of them. Um, we are the largest administrator in New York, um, so you know tack on quite a few more, but maybe about 100 actually have CC programs active. Um, this is a home rule. You guys are the decision makers. You know, you obviously uh, have been elected to these positions. The community trusts you. It's important for the community leaders to work hand in hand with Jewel. Um, you know, while we like to uh, have a personal relationship with those who would be involved in these programs, uh, they know you guys much better than us. Uh, so it's exciting to be able to take action at that local scale and allow you guys to make some decisions that can add further options for uh, those members of your community. And if you are not already aware, there was a climate law enacted in 2019 for New York State. Uh, it is very ambitious, but with programs like CCA, it's attainable. This is considered a high action item through programs like clean smart communities, um, clean energy communities, working towards grants and things like that. You can get a lot of points with CCA because it affects a lot of people at once. Um, so anyway, these goals are 70% renewable electricity by 2030 and 10 gigawatts distributed solar by 2030. I keep forgetting this 2022, even though we're somehow already in July, uh, but 2030 is sneaking around the corner. Uh, so again, utilizing programs like this are a great way to work towards that state goal, and that's why New York incentivizes through things like grants. So community choice aggregation, simply put, is a policy. Um, as I mentioned before, it requires the passing of a local law. This enables towns, villages, cities, the individual municipalities to determine default energy offerings um, on behalf of not only your residents, but also small businesses, um, which would be you know, essentially anything that's about the size of a residence. So you know, schools, universities, hospitals, things like that would not be included in this program. Uh, we have other offerings that we can talk about for those larger scale entities another time. We know we're working with a, a pretty small uh, uh, window this time around. Um, but just to reiterate that that's what, oh, hope you can still hear me. It looks like you might have dropped down. Um, I'm going to keep going now. Hopefully you're still there. All right. Um, so this So you promote this because it creates a 
There we go, maybe it just fell over. Um, we can see money, we see a lot of savings. Uh, for instance, we have an aggregation down in Rockland County. They've already seen, I believe, over $4 million worth of savings this year. Um, they are primarily, uh, those communities are in the process of renewing CCA. So once a contract ends, uh, communities can choose to renew or they can choose basically just let it go back to what it was before, which is the default chosen by uh, the utility. Um, but all of them decided to move forward. So hopefully that's a good indicator of the positive things going on there and you know, I continue saving consumers some money. Supports renewable generation within New York State. As I mentioned, we have a lot of goals for that. And also increase, increases consumer protection. Uh, another thing I alluded to earlier are third-party energy supply companies. So should you look at their options, you know, just kind of searching the market on your own, doing a little bit of independent research, um, it's hard. It's hard to know who you can trust. It's hard to know what kind of contract you're getting into, reading all the fine print, stuff like that. Nobody wants to spend the time to do it. Uh, I worked a bit with um, opt-in community solar, and you have a really low percentage of people doing it because there are a lot of steps. Uh, so this is a way of a bunch of people at once being able to join something that they know is safe, uh, the contract is not held by the individual, it's held by the municipality, um, the individual municipality. So for instance, if you have some neighboring communities who are also interested, uh, that's great. It's awesome if they want to move forward with this around the same time that you do. But at the end of the day, you guys have to make the decision. They have to make the decision. Lewis County as a whole uh, chose Jewel as a CCA administrator, um, which essentially means they did the research, they put out an RFP to learn more or about administrators, but they cannot take any action as a county. It really does have to happen at the municipal level, um, which is great. You know, fortunately, you know the constituents that we ever could, and it would be a great opportunity to be able to work with you hand in hand and go through the process. But again, so you would hold the contract on behalf of residents. They can opt into the program, opt out of the program at any time. It is an opt-out model, which I'll talk about a little bit further in some other slides, um, but they always have the choice to be in it or be out of it, and there's no kind of fee, nothing like that, which is associated sometimes with uh, similar programs or just renewable energy programs in general. CCA has been around since April 2016. Joule has existed since before then, since we mentioned we do plenty of other work in the renewable energy sector. Um, but as early as we could start, you know, figuring out this whole CCA thing and work with communities towards it, we really did. Uh, so that's why we have as many communities as we do. And there are various shapes and sizes. We have some that are around 300 residents, and our largest municipality is the city of Rochester. So they are actually uh, on 100% renewable energy uh, because of their relationship with Jewel. A competitive bidding process occurs that is done by our experts in the room, those who have decades of experience, those who, you know, even before Jewel was established, they were working in renewable energy. So they know how to work with various suppliers, how to get that great price locked in. Uh, for the residents and small businesses. And as I mentioned before, no penalty for opting out. So this is shifting the whole community. I say the whole community, uh, most of the community, I, I should reiterate. Um, people can opt out if they want to. They can opt out before the program ever takes place. Um, but it does become a new default. So if someone were to you know, not take any action, just say, yeah, let's see how this thing shakes out, let's see what kind of rates would be available, um, then they would become part of the program. We usually have 10% or less uh, opting out of the program, and then sometimes later down the road, they decide to opt back in because they see that the rate is really great. So for electricity supply, um, the city is low fixed rate. It's a pretty wonky market right now, but Jewel is doing everything they can to get predictions for what they can do, um, especially locking things in now in, in the case that 
For instance, the market is a little more volatile down the road. It really does impact consumers. If you look at a chart, for instance, of the various rate spikes that happen within the utility, uh, it's, it's exponential. Um, there are certain months, you know, especially high usage months, where the rate tends to be higher. Um, but this is a fixed rate, so you know exactly what you're expecting for a really hot July, like the one that we're experiencing now. And, you know, we kind of have to blast your AC just to get through the day. Or in my case, a fan that's trying its best. Um, so this is a way of saying for the next uh, 24 or 36 months, uh, those are usually the uh, lengths of the contracts held by the municipalities that you're guaranteed that rate with the supplier. We also uh, offer community choice solar, I'll just briefly, briefly touch on, um, which is an opt-out version of community solar. Often, uh, usually don't see too many residents taking part. There are a lot of barriers, such as credit checks, that are required by you know, those who do the billing for the solar projects, et cetera. Um, but with this, you get to avoid that. Low to moderate income customers are prioritized. This guarantees savings of about 10%, so that's a great reason to prioritize those customers who you know, have some extra savings, which is really helpful and in hot months or cold months when there's a lot of energy usage, supporting local solar. So these really are ultra-local projects. With CCA, the Renewable Electricity, that doesn't necessarily need it coming from down the road. Um, sorry, someone said something I don't think I could hear you, but I, I can take a couple questions if we do have time at the end. Um, and this earns money for local projects, so we incentivize um, this, you know, with various uh, donations that are made to sustainability projects. Opt-out uh, community choice solar uh, is only available through Jewel. Uh, we have a couple of communities who are already a part of it, and they were the first of their kind in the entire country which is something to be excited about as well. Um, as I mentioned before, we can consult on various other projects within the community. So community solar is basically just reaping the benefits of uh, having solar panels on your property, but they're not on your property, they go somewhere else. It could be down the road, it could be you know just somewhere else within your municipality, um, but it's a great way of you know avoiding some of the complications that come with installing your own panels or you know having them on your roof, maybe having renters, you know, folks who wouldn't be able to just say, hey, I want solar panels on my roof um, to reap those benefits, such as the savings, you know, supporting renewable energy, really putting your dollars towards local sustainable energy. So credits are earned on the utility bill, and through the community choice solar program, there's only one bill, so everything is combined. And, makes it so it's not confusing. There used to be a two-bill system, which was tough to explain to people. Why am I suddenly getting two bills? How does this mean I'm saving money? You know, it, it gets really tough to convince people that getting two bills is a good thing. Um, but guaranteed savings to this, which is uh, really exciting. Also, the sign up for cancellation fees. And this is just comparing them a little bit. I think I already made some of these points, such as the difference bills, um, there's no you know, aggressive marketing or any of those types of techniques required. No one's going to be knocking on your door. I know we're all sick of getting you know, things in the mail about solar and this, that, the other thing. This is just a, more of a passive way of saying, OK, you get to reap these benefits. Uh, local projects are being developed. And you still only have one bill. You still have the protections that you went know, through a community choice aggregation program. So, final slide I promise. Um, the next steps for CCA, and then uh, we can down the road if you are interested, explore the community choice solar component as well. Uh, but CCA can't exist without it. Uh, it would be approving the CCA local law uh, and selecting Jewel as a program administrator. Neither of these commit the municipality to anything. As I mentioned before, many municipalities have passed this local law um, and they're still taking the steps to actually launch a CCA program. That's totally fine. Everyone moves at their own pace, at their own timeline. Um, but the earlier, the better is usually what we say for this so that we can strategize and see the best time to go to bid and things like that. Since we usually, you know, do that process maybe three times a year or so. Um, so being able to lump the best communities together, for instance, we're hoping to see a, a good chunk of communities in Lewis um, pass these laws soon and, you know, take that action. 
Um, simply passing these means that we know you guys are interested in moving forward and we can start doing some of that development strategy on our side of things. So I can send these over, again, just so you guys can review them you know, via email. We don't have to chat about it too much more now. I worry I've already got a little over uh, 10 minutes, probably more like 12. Um, and we can go from there. And you can also uh, feel free to email me with anything. And oh, a major good final point, the municipality doesn't pay jewel for any services. Uh, the only fees that might be affiliated with So it does not affect residents, it doesn't affect you guys, you're not saying this needs to come out of municipal funds or anything like that. Um, it's working with the suppliers because, you know, we're bringing forward many communities who are looking for supply, um, so it's just a fee that they, you know, kind of work into that so that they don't have to go out and uh, wrangle up <laughs> customers themselves, essentially. So that's another really great thing to point out is uh, you wouldn't have to worry about setting aside X amount of dollars for this. Huh? All right. Thank you so much. That is my contact information. Um, I think most of you should have an email from me anyway, though, if you should need that. And I apologize, I still can't hear you great, but I hope you guys were able to hear me during this. Yes, and again, thank you for bearing with me um, and doing this virtually. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah. I think it's just, um, you know, when not everyone is right up next to the, the microphone on my side. I also, for some reason, my laptop, the volume just like doesn't go very loud sometimes. And I have fans going, so I'll blame the fans too. <laughs> I should have turned those off. It's like, you can you hear me? Or something crazy. But thank you again. You can okay. send any information to me. You can send me. any information to Tim Wonder. To Tim. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. We'll do. Do you want me to jump out of this? No, yeah, okay, Joe. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Bye. I don't know if you guys understood that. Basically, a program where people that would sign on to it would get, I think, up to a 10% reduction on, I don't know if it's the supply or whatever part of the bill. And there is an incentive for the village for $50 per household that the village gets up front. And again, I don't have all the information. Just for, yeah, but you got to have a certain amount of people sign up. Anyway, we'll get more information. We'll go from there. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'd like a motion to open a public hearing on the rezoning of industrial zones. I make a motion to reopen that public hearing. I'll All second. second. All in favor? Okay. Right. Hey, Joe, can we step back to? Uh, I heard Henry talking about uh, Davenport Place. And I had a few things I wanted to. Yeah. Okay. So the reason those times are in those time frames is. Um, over the last, since 2017, the DOT's done studies there. So in those time periods, you're getting uh, anywhere from, my numbers are not 100% correct, anywhere from 30 to 55 cars pulling out of there. Once that time period's over, it drops down to uh, within, I believe, this is all coming from Craig Orland, who was with the DOT because um, I was in contact with them. Um, you're getting roughly, I think you were saying six cars an hour. So it's not a, it's not a safety issue. It's, it's to reduce the amount of uh, traffic pulling out there in those times for school zones so we don't have traffic backing up. So the DOT's done two studies on it. And I think one, one was done in 17 and one was done in 19. I remember right. So they stayed out there for two, three days, writing down how many cars are pulling out. So that, I don't want to say it's their recommendation, but when I told them what the time period was, he said that's perfect. That fits right in. That would reduce the amount of bag flow and everything else. As I, as I stated, I have no, I have no axe to grind because I have children. No. But I'm just looking at it from the standpoint. Yeah. It's 24 hours a day. It's, you can't turn that way. Restrictive hours like they asked. 
the attorney, uh, 929, somebody turns and gets a ticket to go to the judge. But it's not a safety concern at all. Oh, not a real person. Safe distance hopefully is, is good. It's more of the amount of traffic flow, and that's that's what the DOT is. Yeah, the, the backup. Uh, yeah, the when you, gets backed up. Yeah, when you get to like where the um, district offices yeah. in the morning, that's and that's where the safety issue becomes because then people are just. I think it was right by the superintendent's letter. They, they, they get impatient. I mean, I get frustrated. It's like suicide driving through there. Yeah. We can always pass this and we can modify it right. after the fact. Right. Sure. Yeah. Which is required for a public hearing. Yeah. You need to public hearing. So, like, this this is a stop. And it might, might be all we need. And it may be easier to go 24 hours, but I also think in those hours, it's, I mean, the chief's not here, but it's easier to enforce it within a hour and a half as well. Or whatever the time frame is. Okay, <clears throat> any public comment on the public hearing on the zoning? I know she was If not, we'll leave both those hearings open for the time being and move on to approval of minutes. Excuse absent board members on our June 15th regular board meeting. We'll make a motion we approve uh, those minutes on June 15th board meeting. Uh, second. All in favor? Okay. okay, approval of vouchers. Okay, vouchers. We got the general fund total of $188,675.87. For our water fund, we have a total of $55,837.51. Sewer fund, $31,188.20. And for the... You say? Yeah, I'm sorry. Did I do it right? I got 90 cents on the phone. 90. Oh, that's all. I can't read. Okay. Uh, We're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we're the audit committee, too. Uh, for the where am I? capital fund, we've got a grand total of $1,451,886.24. Uh, $1.14 million of that is for the payout. Sewer plan. Yes. So uh, all the bills have been audited and approved, and I will make a motion that we pay those bills. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Unfinished business. Five streets. Uh, basically, we've been back and forth with EFC the last week here, getting people work and everything together. Uh, and, uh, looks like we're finally getting to the end we're going to be able to close out the uh, five street sewer portion of it. <coughs> but there's a couple things for municipal solutions. Uh, one is on the five streets project, uh, basically to change their contract. That one's going to stay the same, but on the uh, That one's staying the same, the original contract, but they're amending that a little bit. Do you have anything on that, Kevin? I don't have anything on that, no. So hopefully we'll get this one closed out here for shortly. Phase two? You, you don't have anything on Vice Street that I don't know about. Do. The big thing is just getting it closed out with this. All right, wastewater treatment plan. Um, just to give you guys an update, EPG and NCC have both been on site this last month doing a lot of their work. Um, the main thing for EPG is despite the lagoons and dewatering the lagoons, so they began dropping the water in lagoon number one. Um, NCC has been working mostly on the chlorine contact in there. Um, I 
do have a notice of award for Henderson Brothers here tonight that I'll need the board to make a motion on. Um, that would be for contract number four, the aeration diffuser equipment construction. Uh, and that would be for $994,832. They were the only bidder on that, so. So, yeah. Yeah, I see them on the motion for the notice award for Henderson. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, can we have a motion for the. I have a question. Okay. Are you, are you happy with that bid? No, we're not yeah. I know, but I'm happy with it. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was actually lower. Part of it was included in APG's bid before, and it was almost $200,000 lower than, than that was. Well, originally it was, one, originally it was like a little over $1.2 right. and it came in at nine hundred and something dollars yeah. yeah. So we were definitely lower. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? And staying with the wastewater treatment plant, uh, because of changes and things that we've done down there, which is to make it better, uh, Vanessa the Solutions wants to amend uh, <coughs> their contract with us, which would increase their contract fee by $5,000. I think everybody should have a copy of that. So we need a motion to. Uh, Agree to that. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Do you have anything on the groundwater? Yes. Um, I have both of the agreements tonight for the two contractors um, one for Manfred Construction for the general contract and one for SC Spencer Electric for the electric contract. And I also have their notice to proceed as well. Um, I do want to know, I believe SC Spencer, we were, we were all set on their bonds and insurances. Manfred, we're still waiting on a couple of things on their insurances, and we're also waiting for their final bonds. Um, okay, so, uh, so can we get a motion for SC Spencer to award or notice to proceed with your contract? Yeah, Joe, do we have to do separate motions for the agreement and the notice proceeding or can they just do it all one? They can, they can do it all one. Okay. So do you need a motion to sign the agreement and sign the notice proceeding one? Can I be in one? We need that for SC Spencer. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Right. Mm -hmm. But on on Manfred's Manfred, Manfred, we're still waiting on a couple things with insurance, right? Right. So I think you, you can make a motion contingent on, on Joe Russell and your insurance company approving the bonds and insurances. Contingency on that? We need a motion on uh, for Manfred construction. I like that motion contingent on the uh, insurance requirements. Mm -hmm. Second. All second. All in favor? All right. Because they they have the point and then they want to get going in September to get everything up and running. Correct. Yeah. We've been working through some mills with both contractors mm -hmm. so they can begin ordering materials and mm -hmm. stuff. So but Manfred wants to start in September. Yeah. That's all you have? Yep. Thanks, Sean. I got another one on the municipal solutions on things that's been going on with the groundwater. Um, revising their contract. For an additional fifteen hundred dollars, so I would need a motion for us to accept that. I'll make a motion to amend the contract for the municipal solutions. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody have any questions on either one of those projects? I think at the moment everything's running pretty smooth with whatever was up there. Works great. Get a chance to drive down the sewer plant. Works progressing pretty good down there. Make sure you plug your nose when you go down there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
LED street light program. Well, I was just kind of working away at that. Basically, I talked with Ilya from New York Power Authority on Monday. Uh, basically, all the village needs is we got three new lights that got to go up, and we got 26 inspections that got to get redone, and we should be able to go. And he told me that they finally have all the materials. That's one of the problems with a lot of these projects, material is to Yeah, they think they're going to get them in two or three weeks, and that's a month and a half later. But anyway, they finally got everything they need for us, and he said that we're going to be the first on the punch list, and they should be in town, if not next week, the following week. He said, we'll definitely get put back together by the end of July. So if he's right, we should be wrapping this up this month. Anybody, any questions on that? <clears throat> Rezoning of uh, industrial options. Anybody, got anything out there on the public hearing? We got anything in there? No. no. There's a couple of uh, things that we referred to the calendar here. Two of them were just functional, which I fixed in my copy. And then there was one regarding the existing zoning law uh, under the, I had to ask Megan what she actually meant on this, but it was regarding they were commercial and residential zones. Signs shall not be placed inside or rear yards in the neighborhood commercial and residential zones. And they, they thought that that wasn't clarified enough. Now that we're changing it from neighborhood one to neighborhood two. So my proposal is that we just change it to signs shall not be placed inside for rear yards in all neighborhood commercial and residential zones. So that pretty much makes sense in neighborhood zones too. So that would just be a typo thing too. And then there was another thing on the actual existing amount. The intent of the change, uh, they thought that we should a little better the intent of the change. And we were talking to Michael the other day, we came up with uh, some different wording to encourage commercial development in the uh, industrial and commercial two zones, I think it should be. So I'll have to come up with a little better wording on that before we finalize that, and we can, can we you can, we, I, I think you get enough comments so that you can incorporate those comments without another public hearing. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you want to, if you want to work on those and get them uh, to clear. I will. I'll yeah. send the final draft to uh, Danielle and then, then we will have to send it. No, we don't have to send it back. No, you don't need to send it back. You were okay. kind of planning to send their thing. We, uh, once you get the final draft done and she signs it, send it to me. I'll sign it, we'll send it in. We'll have to make that one other change. It's just a typo change in the existing code. Yeah. Okay. And we, once we make those changes, then we can go to uh, next month. You can vote on it tonight. Oh, we can? Based on those changes. Based on those changes. Yeah. Okay, but before we do that, we need to close the public hearing on Let's close them both. Make motion to close it I'll make a motion. Let's close the public hearing on Davenport Place first. I'll make a motion to do that. Mm -hmm. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, can we make a motion now to pass the law as it's written? Sure. I'm going to make a motion to pass the law, public hearing law, as it is written. Are you talking Devon? Yep. Yeah. Right. If you're talking Davenport, please, I think there is one change we should make on that. Okay. Basically, uh, you it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, I was talking to Randy with us. It's just to make it easier so the police department's up there and they got uh, write a ticket or two and it goes before the judge where it says uh, at the intersection of Davenport Place and State Street I think we should put North State Street where it says and let's make it North State Street that's, that's the only the change I'd like to see yes. that way uh, 
there shouldn't be any problems from all over court. Somebody's trying to throw it out. Yep. I'll make the motion with the north with the with the change from State Street to North State Street. You have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all set, Let me go with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for the rezoning of the industrial zones. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we want to pass that with Tim's changes, right? Correct. We need a motion to pass the rezoning of industrial zone with the uh, changes. I'll, right? I'll make the motion that we pass for the, 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 to approve the rezoning of industrial zones with the amendments. Need a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 A comprehensive plan. It's been going back and forth for a while, but I know Tim, Paul, and myself, and uh, different ones have been working with Helen and Kathy. And I think uh, Helen sent the final draft to everybody today. And, uh, she just basically wanted all the board members to uh, get a chance to look at it. Hopefully, if it's all right with everybody, she's hoping to get town approval on it tomorrow and they'd like to be able to send it to the county for their final approval. So I don't think anybody's really had a chance to look at it, but it's... She just explained to me in shop that she changed the charts and what she did was added the numbers so it wasn't quite as confusing. I guess. Instead of graphs. Instead of the graphs, like mm -hmm. this, basically. And they're up to, they're up to actually, date numbers, yeah, too. Yeah, she right? actually added the numbers so you could have actually see it some of the way the graph set up because the, the scales on the left are, are different there. Mm -hmm. Half of them you can't even see on the graph. So, so she changed yeah. that and once we approve that, it's gotta go that it's gotta go to the village. Again, right? You mean the color? With that? You mean the color? The color. Yes, it's yeah. gotta go back to the county. And then once we hear back from the county, then we got to turn around and have a public hearing. On it. So I guess it's just that we all right with the way it sets. And I'll make a motion to send it to the county for their approval. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I believe she's planning on sending it. I'll check with her, but I think she's planning on sending it after the town goes on it tomorrow. I think it's going to be a lot, lot better than what we originally had. We had 170 some pages and down to 59. Yeah. A lot of stuff makes a lot more sense too. It's probably the way to set up a computer oh, set up like 59 or something. That's what it's worth. Okay, how the Citizen of the Year award go? Okay, Citizen of the Year award last night was awarded to Doug Hanel. At the fair, at the fair right now, the information booth is nomination. Uh, applications for next year. I haven't had a chance, Diane, to look on the website, but I'm assuming it's updated for next year on the website, Cooper 2023. Um, it's not? not, but I can have to get tomorrow. And then they go on, I think we'll be able to go on the website, and they've got to April 23rd of next year to nominate somebody. Um, so Doug was here last night, received the award, and him and the person that nominated received a $50 gift certificate. Two jobs. Uh, Americans a sponsored the award. So that's it on that. Yeah. How's your music in the park, bro? Music in the park. Uh, there's a few things I've got there. Music in the park, I, I would say, is going very well. We had a rain out and we rescheduled. Uh, first week we had we had dual band, uh, and then the next week uh, we had uh, uh, rain out, and then. Third week we had Josh Green. Um, while we're on the discussion, I've tried to reach local vendor to to handle our movie movie in the park. Uh, not had a response, but I have a proposal from a Raymond Moore uh, out of Buffalo, and I talked with Bud Year, who I've known for years, out of Clayton. They had them there last Saturday night uh, at the Lions uh, uh, Park in Clayton. 
this uh, old Dallas Lions football field, and they put out a movie, and I asked him what the quality of the equipment they had, and he said it was phenomenal. Um, what it amounts to is, and I've got the estimate here, I didn't get a chance to get back to the town at 3.30. What it would include would be, so that includes two speaker stands, two speakers, all equipment needed to play the movie, movie screen, and I don't think we need a generator. Uh, but they provide that also. The client is responsible to provide a non-Blu-ray DVD. I haven't had a chance to talk with the library. Uh, my thought is if we get three DVDs, in case one doesn't work, but we, we, pick, we take the three movies and that might be let the, the crowd decide which movie we're going to show. Uh, they show the uh, Lion King cartoon version, and that's a good movie. That would be a good choice. They're far enough away that that could be one of the choices. But we do have over $1,000 left in our music budget. Um, I would like to suggest that we make a motion to approve this uh, tonight, and I'll try and get uh, the movies lined up. I haven't had a chance yet. And uh, we'll still have, we're still within our budget of uh, 5,500 that we have. What's the cost of that? It's 750. And they bring in all the equipment that's <coughs> coming out of Buffalo. So, like I said, I called Bud Deer today on the way back from Augsburg, and he just returned my call, and he said, uh, he said that uh, the equipment was, it was excellent. It's, it's, it's like an outdoor drive at the theater. He said it was great. And they had a very good crowd. Um, I'm hoping we can somehow get the word out and have a good crowd and I'll do the best I can to push that so that. And what would the date for that? That would be a good question, uh, Tim. August the 23rd, after our band plays and that night on August 23rd. Uh, well, it is, but the dates are in there. Well, the, how much you pay? Yeah, the amount and then when they. I saw the saw the August the 23rd, but plays at 30th. Due North. Due North plays at 23rd. That's the local band Tony Levi. Yep. So he, he'll draw himself. He drew pretty good last year, then it rained. And he ended up playing to a few people that stuck around when, when the light put it out. But Tony, he works at LLG, uh, along with Brian Trainer, who is his host at LLG. So. If you want, I can pursue this. If not, uh, maybe, maybe we don't do a movie. It's, it's up to the board. I think the fire department, Joe's not here, Austin, because they've got an emergency. But uh, I think they plan on providing free popcorn and snow cones and have a booth for donations. The fact that we're not charging for the movie exempts us from the way I understand it from royalties. <coughs> because we're doing it for free. Do you uh, see any issue with that, Mr. Russell? Nope. The Lions Club, I guess, has done this for years. I'm clean. The only reason I know this, I didn't get a chance to go, but I have to eat breakfast with him when I was up there camping the past weekend. And I was telling him what we were trying to do, and he laughed. He says, we're doing it tonight. <laughs> so anyways, that's, that's the information. Can I keep that? Absolutely. Does that require an option? I don't have to go and approve that. Yeah. yeah. It's in the budget, but I, it's not it's not music, so I think it's time it should be approved. I make a motion that we go ahead and is it more, where, yeah, more Raymond, Raymond Moore. Raymond Moore. Um the amount of seven hundred and fifty dollars for the movie that evening on the twenty third. What do they do with part of the rain or something like that? I will talk with them. Because if, if we cancel because of rain, I don't think we should pay. And I will also ask them for a certificate of insurance. I think we've got to have that. At least one of their speakers told us. I don't know. When did you cancel? That's a good question. So when Mike Burkhart won that or not that long, we knew it was going to get canceled. We canceled it, dude. Okay. We have to cancel sooner for this. I'm coming from Buffalo. I dress an entry just like a baseball game. Yeah. You can cancel before they leave. It's four hours. So we, we canceled at 2 o'clock. Because he's not going to play with us. <coughs> <Until then, so. coughs> okay. Second on the second? I'll sit up here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You know how to eat those anyway, right? 
And we're going we're gonna to pursue it a little bit more. Yeah, I've got um, most of them. The only thing I don't have is. Well, that, that's what I was getting at was the cancellation policy and all that. That, that would be discussed with them in the morning. Seems like a decent bunch of people, right? I don't see any issues that way. I think they would understand that. And, and even if it's a light rain, it's kind of unlike music. Of course, they'd have to sit outside with, with the umbrellas, but yeah. that is about kids. They, they'd probably better have it rain. They have a big expensive equipment. They're not going to want to have rain. <laughs> well, that, that's probably good. That is an excellent point, so they would be happy to see us. Anybody else have any other old business? <coughs> that brings us down to new business. <coughs> Craft surcharges. For June 2022, uh, $6,500 for water. We have a motion to approve that. Make a motion to approve that. Surcharges for June. How big? Aye. Aye. Housing board appointment. Cassie Forbus, uh, term through March 31st, 2025. I'd like a motion to appoint her. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mayor, I've got something else I'd like to bring up on the new business to start. Um, as we know, there's a, a lot of talk, uh, rails to trails. And I don't know that we received a lot of information or any information from the county as to what's going on. I know Mr. Sharker is sick right now, um, but I, I think we all, I hope we would all agree that we do not want motorized vehicles coming into the village on trails. And I think before we get too far, I think, I think rather this happens or not, we probably should have a law on the books prohibiting motorized vehicles on, uh, on trails. My next concern is there's such thing as these new electric bikes. <coughs> E-bikes. Yes, and do we, do we, with that, uh, I, I think probably I don't have a problem with them being included in that whole thing too, but would that be considered a motorized vehicle? Yeah, I, I was looking into different, uh, see if there was some laws out there, but believe it or not, that was a big complaint, was e-bikes. That a lot of the cities were trying to well, that's why I probably get away from them. You could ride a, a regular bike, but you just couldn't. Well, my bike. question is, is it considered motorized? And if it is. Well, yeah, I think you define, you define it as motorized in your local law. Well, Joe, based on that, you got some laws. I, I don't think we have to do it tonight, but I think you've got to get moving at it. Yeah. Uh, no, we already have laws on the books for no motorized vehicles, like no such forward and stuff like that in the village. If we do, I'm going to at least on the road. Do some some more. Some more. <coughs> I'd have, there is something about running on the, on the village streets. You may have snowmobiles or four wheelers. When you come into town, there used to be a sign right up there uh, where it said, Welcome to the village of Owl, right below it. Well, we'll just modify that to trails too, possibly. Mm -hmm. sure. Is that something you can look into? Yes, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that would be that. Be but I think your, your original point is, is very valid. I think we haven't had a lot of information. So, I mean, you have bikes or walking with it. I get the impression that they really don't. I think that they, maybe this is unfair for you to say, but I think they want to include that stuff. They just aren't coming out to say that. They want to include motorized uh, ATVs I, I, and like that. Yeah, I think the meeting I went to, it was talked about that it was excluded out in the village, but then outside because we brought up somebody complaining from outside the village saying, how come they get special treatment? So I, I believe that was what the. And that leads me to one other thing. Parking tickets. We have a person that uh, parks in front of their business in the middle of town that has received, I've been told, 17 parking tickets. The judge, I talked to the judge a few minutes ago, and he says basically the parking tickets right now, the way they are written, are pretty much unenforceable. So my feeling is that if we're continuing to issue parking tickets, if we issue a second ticket in a certain time frame, my feeling is we call, if, if we can do this legally, and I, I'd like Mr. Russell to look into it, we call and inspect home people because they made a mockery of it. 
and or we start putting your name in the newspaper for property uh, scoff off. Why is it unenforceable? Because they don't show up and you can't, you can't, the way I understand you can't go after them. Our law, our law doesn't really well, stop. You should be able to go so after Dan because the tickets aren't paid after a certain time. Or is that a program we have to get into with the state where when it comes time for you to renew your driver's license or your registration, you can't renew it unless your tickets are paid? Well, the judge is here to run the vote. Don't ask me, I haven't looked into this yet. But do we want to? I think we need to know how to judge, and maybe he won't want to speak about it because he has to hear it in court. Well, he's not going to talk to you about what, what, what he can do. But we may, uh, we will have to look into that. Yeah. But I think some of the problem, too, there, I think for that to happen, I think the judge has to submit stuff to the state. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he may not, he may need somebody to jack him off. Well, <laughs> all I can say is the two hour parking in the village is. There's no, it's just not a it's, 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 it's not working. Well, the other problem right now, Dan, and I'm sure some of the people in the village probably know that, we're short-handed when it comes to the police department. We're, we're running with part-timers and everything else. I, and we're, we're having a tough time trying to meet. I'm not even, I'm not even accusing the police department of anything. I'm just saying the tickets that are written, right. nothing's being done. Right. 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 right, we could write 100 tickets. And it would just create more of a paper law. Probably we're better off if we don't issue them right now. I shouldn't say that, but it's just the way it is. But I know that you're, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking about, and that whole setup down there is not good. No. Yeah, maybe you do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think his name needs to go to the newspaper. It worked very well for him. Former county attorney. <laughs> His name went in the paper. Is that it? I'm that man. Yes, thank you. Okay, next. Uh, Racco newsletter. Anybody have any questions on that or anything for their July newsletter? Who's at the fair? Hmm? Okay, Cream Cheese Festival. I would like to speak on that. I made a phone call yesterday to Jeremiah Papinon and asked him if the cream cheese festival had any issues that uh, we were told we were uncooperative with the county. And Jeremiah said, to his knowledge, absolutely nothing. He said, Dan, I didn't even come to the meeting tomorrow night. I said, I don't think you need to, but he's very happy with what's going on. So I want to go to let everybody know because we were told that uh, we were uncooperative with the cream cheese festival. So as far as the chairman of the cream cheese festival is concerned, we're fine. Well, he's sent me a letter or an email just uh, wanting to touch base about the cream cheese festival here at the beginning of the month. And then uh, uh, he sent out this other one here. And basically, what's going to happen is, uh, which we did last year, Paul, police chief, Mike Carpinelli, we all sat down and small quarter room and, and hatched out a few ideas and how we wanted things to go. And I think it's probably pretty much going to go about the same way this year. I don't think there's going to be any problems. The only thing I think, I'm pretty sure in August we have to do a resolution so we can close the street. And other than that, I think it's probably business as usual. With them. I talked with Randy. I, you know, he might have a little problem with health this year, but we're going to talk to sheriff's department, see if we can maybe get an extra deputy or two from them. So. But we'll be working that out as we have our final meeting in all this year. So, anybody's got any other questions on that? That's about it. We need a motion to hold it on that date or no? Uh -huh. Do we need a motion to like accept them having it on that date? I don't think we do. We've never done one in the past. The only thing we've ever done is, a, I think, a resolution so we can close the street. Right. But usually okay. we do that in August, okay. in September, for that date. Because they uh, they take care of everything they have to do the state of New York and everything. They do all that. So. Okay. This is basically just an informational letter from them letting us know what, which we get every year, really, Jeremy. Or the, 
Holders of charges he sends us a letter. Laval Academy and Central School Capital Improvement Project. Basically what that's all about, uh, I've talked with their attorney twice. Uh, Paul and I talked with their attorney uh, together on a speaker conference. And uh, after discussing the project, uh, we don't see where there's a problem signing a letter. We corrected them. There's a couple things in their seat core. Uh, I gave them the information that they need to look up. And basically, it was dealing with a uh, contaminated area where DEC had done a cleanup here a while back when it was Payne Jones over there years ago, uh, which they weren't aware of. Uh, they kind of give us an idea how the drainage and everything is going to go over there. And they told us they would definitely keep us in the loop. But this is just a starter so they can move forward with the Board of Education to get the project going. Because the other thing that's going to happen, once they get their final design and everything on the project, I can't even go forward until after they have a vote by the school residents of the, of the school district. It's got a vote on it for it to go for the capital project. Did you see a copy of that letter, Joe? I don't think so. But no. in, in this packet? Yeah. No. So there's really no action tonight. So basically, I just, uh, I guess I'm just looking for uh, probably a motion to authorize me to sign a letter and send it back to the lady. Is that letter, did that letter include for them to be the lead agency? They want the Board of Education to be the lead agency. Back when we did that project, we required a the first project over there, we required a retention pond. With them doing what they're doing, is that retention pond going to suffice with the, with the new capital project? They've got a few different designs. I haven't seen anything because they haven't actually done anything. Um, talking with the, I believe he was an architectural engineer, they're going to use part of that retention pond and drainage and stuff is going to be set up a different way because I don't think that our drainage system on the Woodland Act can handle the amount of water that comes out that field. So well, no, it's something so. I'll be. Um, yeah, because we don't want any, we don't want any problem around the Woodlawn. You know, we don't. The Woodlawn's better than it was years ago, but it's still not good. <clears throat> okay. This is just the very beginning of the project. Yeah, it's a request for right. for us to consent to them doing the secret. <clears throat> And then, as Joe said, we still have to get the approval of the, <coughs> of the entire uh, lot of votes. So. But when we discuss things with them on the phone, that seems quite reasonable on everything. So they definitely said they keep following the rules. I'll make the motion for you to sign the letter, Joe. Second. All in favor? All right. <coughs> There was one other thing on rails to trail before I forget. If signs from the If you got one new yet? No, I said we go together. I don't have one. Uh, if if that come if the county buys that, we will be looking at losing the twenty one hundred dollars a year. Twenty one hundred plus in, in tax. So. Plus you'd have to probably provide police services. Is that on yet? When the railroad pays us twenty one hundred dollars a year in taxes, if the county buys that, they'll be taxed up because it's within their corporate boundaries. The we don't make boundaries much. of the county. We don't make much out of it now, but uh, well, where is that? On the railroad street. The railroad. Well, the whole railroad. The whole railroad the whole line the whole, within the village of Wild. They go through the village. Okay. Wendy, Wendy, work those figures up for me this morning. Very nice to meet you. Appreciate it. We got one other correspondence too, Joe. Uh, we got a text from the county manager, Ryan Fache, which says, tell the mayor, tell Mayor Beagle and Paul they did a great job today. Things could have been worse, but they kept it all under control. I wish you guys did. Yes, I'm um, Paul will feel so. Yeah. <laughs>
I got a couple of things. The one thing I just passed around, and uh, basically, I'd like you to take a look at that, Joe. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, this summer, we have it every summer. You get funk landlords or houses that are in foreclosure and nobody's cutting the grass. And uh, Codes has been very good this summer about sending letters and things out, but we've got a certain few that companies that charge down in Texas or someplace, so they just ignore it. Uh, when it comes to uh, people that don't remove their snow, after they get a notice from the village, the village can go in there and uh, plow the snow and charge them, and if they don't pay the bill, they can get assigned to their taxes. Well, in our Looking at the two laws that talks about mowing and the other one about snow, there's nothing in there that if we were to go in and mow somebody's lawn, that we can actually charge them for assessment of their taxes if they don't pay it. So basically, what I've done is I've tried to put together a law, and it's basically the last few lines that are different from the existing law. And after Joe looks at it, I'm thinking that that should replace it one whole section. And then, probably be, won't be too late this year, but next year, if we have that same problem, we'll be able to enforce it and charge the mowing back to the property. So I just bring it to the board to see what if they think it's worthwhile to move forward. And if it is, I'd like Joe to look at that. And, and if we've got to revise it to make it sound better, then... Do we have the title of village treasurer or is it village clerk? What's that? Is it village treasurer or village clerk? Clerk treasurer. Okay, I would I would say we want to go clerk treasurer. But that way, when Tim and Ward send out their letters, and they'll have some. Where did you get the twelve inches from? Where did you get the twelve inches? That's in. Uh, I believe that's in the existing code. Your testing your model with this code. Yeah. Okay. Well, basically, what I did is I printed out. The code, I printed the two codes out for the small, and, the, and then I just kind of went back and forth. To do we have to write a trespass and go on and mow their lawn if they don't do it? What's that? Do we have the right to go on as a village and mow their lawn and then build them? Pass a law, I would say. Sure. So, my question yeah. here is, Joe, I, I believe the property making this law, the New York State property making this law, is 10 inches. So, we may want to keep it in line with that. Yes. Well, that's what, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to. Somebody goes out there and says, well, mine's only 11 inches, and you say 12. Well, this is going to replace that whole section, so it'll be easy enough to just change it to yeah. 10. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. Make sure. But we can, if you want it tonight, we can just change it to 10. It's only two inches. All we got, all, I think all you got to say is we will make it uh, a line with the New York State project. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cohesive state. But I guess what I was wondering, Joe, is after you look at it, if you could bring it back. And then we could schedule the public hearing. Yeah, uh, I, I could draft up the local. Uh, Mr. Dennis, did you mow that one that I brought up to you? I think it. Who? You think you could draft it up? We should go ahead and schedule it. Sure. Public hearing on it? For I personally did. So you said it was from Billy. Yeah, let me, let me take a look at it. Because it's getting late in the year. I mean, the yeah. grass is going to slow down now. Unless we get come over and the rains. But I just. We should have done it a couple of years ago when it's, it's come up every summer, and so we finally got to get something done about it. I'll look into the white requirement. Excuse me, yep. just a sec. This doesn't say anything about adding it to your taxes, though. Indirectly. Well, indirectly, it doesn't, it doesn't say it'll be added to the taxes. Well, that's what happens. Usually, if, if they get a bill, it's just like the water bill. Yeah. <coughs> they assess, we, if they don't pay the water bill, specifically ask that when you're I mean, if that's what you're talking about, it doesn't say, let's do it. So leading to your property tax? Not paid within so many days. Well, this gives them 10 days. Mm -hmm. They don't do something within 10 days. Well, as far as mowing. But I'm talking about the bill, Joe. I would say you give them 30 days to pay the bill. I mean, it's well, we don't really levy until a 
a certain time of the year anyway. The problem so we've it got. Said it also say, Joe, it said contacted by the village. Should it say village or the village representative? The village representative? Probably, yeah. And Here's the that will come from the coast office. Here's the other question I have, Mr. Russell. Can we put it in that we're not going to send a repeat uh, notice because I'm being told now every time this happens, we've got to send another notice. And if we notify them once within a season, that stands for the whole season. I don't know. It's not that, it's not that little. It's that big a deal. It's the same two letters. Yeah. I think it's a, well, the problem I have is it's a big deal because you're going to have repeat offenders. That's, that's the thing I'm looking at. Yeah, you only going to have a handful. For what it's worth, we usually put that in our violation notices. The problem you've got is and pay, you know, for the rest of the year. The people that live next door to these people, it irritates them. Yeah. But I, I don't blame well, them. On a regular basis, I guess, it's more like maintaining it on a regular basis. So we do put that word in there for what it's worth, but maybe, I don't know if we can do anything with it. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in there. Yeah, we're going to put that word in Okay. One thing I got here is uh, we talked in the past, I'm dragging this out, but about dog control, about uh, trying to get an agreement with the town. Well, the town put together a memorandum of understanding. Basically, they came back, they were looking for uh, the dog control officer to track that, expenses for any dog related calls, there Allow the uh, expenses associated with these calls will be covered by both municipalities at a rate of 65% village, 35% town, and any change in allocation is subject to approval by respective governing bodies. Well, I didn't bring this to the board last month because I wanted a chance to talk to the town. I figure those percentages are way high. Yeah. And I talked with Randy, and uh, I'm thinking 50-50 uh, would be a better percentage rate than. And the town has agreed to go 50-50. Uh, and and to, Bob Hong was in today, yeah. there was just a few minutes ago, and said, actually, we're going to benefit with this by 50-50 because uh, the mileage um, so far this year. I got it right here. Yep, yeah, go ahead. I didn't know. For the last, this is, this is six months, um, what the village share would be for six months. Dog control officers waived. $2,225.04. But then uh, they also pay the dog control officer mileage. Uh, the mileage for six months would have been uh, $552.33. So for six months, it would have cost the village $2,777.37. So chances are, I'd probably run the village $6,507,000 a year and have them. Yeah. All our because the problem is they have to do all the ag markets for the dog control, they have to do the town dog control. But the village has some separate dog control laws, and he does not have to do those. Where with this memorandum, he would have to. But the other thing that we're going to gain if we go with this, they have all the contracts and everything with like the main society for sheltering the dog and stuff like that, which we don't. Uh, so all that would be uh, in place. And basically what I'd like to do is I'd just like to get, give Joe a copy of that and have him look it over and see what you think. Mm -hmm. And then if Joe's okay with it, what the board would like to do. What would, what would be wrong with having a discussion with the county? You know, in the rule of cooperation, I would think that it would be nice if the county uh, started a, a county animal control office. And then everything could be, cons everything could be tailored and be consistent amongst all of the communities. I think some of the towns tried that quite a while back. It just didn't fly, man. It didn't, I know it didn't fly, but, you know, one of the things mm -hmm. that they could do is because of the Anybody have 
any other questions on that? We want to wait till we hear back from Joe and then we vote on it next month. We want to take a moment to think about it. How do you want to vote? I'll take a look at it, John, if you send an email. Because basically, if you guys would like, you can uh, make copies of this for, because he's got a breakdown here of how many dogs for the village, how many dogs for the town, for the different poles. If you want to take a look at that. Wait a while. I'll make a copy of this and put it in one box. You give me a little more information. Yeah, yeah. okay. so you can send that out later. Okay. Yeah. That's what we'll do. We'll send. The other thing, I uh, just want to hopefully get permission from the board to go ahead with this. Our signs coming in, you know, we tried to update them here a few years ago. You know, Donna started before the pandemic hit. We ended up with the signs she was getting made, and one of those, if you'd come out of Walmart, notice the wind ripped a big piece out of it, and then the wind caught it again, and it was flopping in the breeze, and we didn't take it the rest of the way down because we were afraid it was going to blow out in the traffic and hit a vehicle or somebody. So I just talked with uh, Stuart Signs out of uh, Clayton, or Cape Benson. Uh, and if you drive over to Castor Land, take a look at their sign. Uh, Stuart Signs made that one. And I'm kind of thinking I'd like to do something similar to this. The only thing is we'd have uh, white PVC on the posts on the side. And it would say, basically it would say like, welcome to the village of Lowell, established, and everybody have a little thing up in the top. So let's just try to clean up the signs coming into our village, make things look a little better. So is it all right with the board if I go ahead? It's gonna cost us about 4,200 bucks. We'll take that back, 4,700. And the money for that, uh, I do have some UDAG money that basically use for purification in the village that we can use. That's nice. So that type of design, I like that. What's that? That type of design, I like Similar that. Similar to that. Yeah, we like we haven't picked out. Uh, Paul and I have been looking at signs. we got Pam's been looking at signs, Danielle. To, uh, and I've talked with this company. we got to give them a $200 deposit to get it started. But then all we do is send them an idea what we want, the colors, <laughs> and we'll start designing something for us. But I just wanted to bring new people into the loop and see if it was all right to keep moving on this. We'll make a motion to keep going. I'll second. All in favor? Second. And at that, I guess I'll shut up. <laughs> well, I think that's my Uh, No, tax collection um, was done as of June 30th. So at this point, any unpaid taxes are subject to the first round of penalties. Um, I don't have the figures kind of how much we've collected out of all the, but for the most part, I would say a good chunk of it came in this year, which was nice. That's it. Might I add one question? Are we supposed to then, you know, approve a list of uh, the ones that have to be relevant, or is that next month? Nothing will be relevant till October. But do we have to? I have to get all the figures for yeah. you guys to like have the final numbers of what was collected for June. Okay. So that'll be in next month, yeah. Chief of Police is in here, uh, Superintendent. Well, I'll start out with the good. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, we the DPW crew went up to Veterans Park. We poured a concrete pad. The village band had purchased a storage building, which is if you go up there and see it right next to the uh, bandstand. I'm not sure if our guys got up there to stain it, but it'll be the same color as the bandstand. It'll definitely help us out because the rooms in the bandstand where the electrical panels are have been full of the band stuff, so now at least we can get in there and 
uh, work on stuff and shut power off. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, Barrett's, Barrett Paving was here, did the chips paving. We still have uh, two streets to do. Jackson, um, we are doing some drainage work on there. Um, I'm hoping they're going to start next week. Um, working in, in uh, working with Barrett's. Uh, Barrett's has to do the DOT paving and milling out here on 812 and through the village. So when they're done with that, hopefully they're done with our project, they'll get Jackson Street paved for us and Clinton Street, the uh, bottom section. Um, we've had a contractor in here spray foaming our DPW garage, so hopefully our heat bill though won't be as uh, large as it was last year. They should be finished today or tomorrow, I'm not sure. The bad news is uh, this morning we had a six inch water main break uh, right across from the hospital. That was due to uh, old water lines. Um, so if anybody ever complains about our five street project, this is, why we, this is the reason why we do all the infrastructure work. Um, we had that six inch main, we went to shut it off because of the hospital project. They were um, uh, doing some work up there and when we shut it off, it broke. Um, we had planned on trying to do it ourselves. Um, the county came in, the county emergency manager, um, Bob McKenzie came in, kind of took control of the situation, talked with the county. Um, NCC is up there doing the um, hospital work. So he talked to the county. Um, they actually said that they were going to pay for it. Let's get it done because it's a hospital. We had difficulty shutting off valves to isolate it. Um, as of 4 o'clock when I got here, we were just starting to backfill it. Um, so I want to say NCC came in and did all the work for us. My DB DPW crew was there doing it. Um, the surrounding towns were great. Steve Skiff from Watson, they brought some dump trucks. The other contractor that's up at the hospital, Barracks, did tons of work up there. Um, New York State DOT, Mark O'Connor's been really good today. Talked with Tim Hunt, because um, we were going to dig it ourselves. He actually went all the way up to Stillwater, got his track hoe, had it here before I found out NCC was going to do it. So big credit to the county. Um, Department, of Health was, Department of Health was here all day. Um, everything went smooth. I know it was an inconvenience because of the fair and traffic. We had the road shut off um, from the hospital all the way down to uh, Boswick. Um, everything went great. Um, first thing this morning, I contacted Kraft because of water usage and our three million gallon tanks right there. Um, we were losing tons of water. We got that under control. I contacted Kraft, talked to uh, Eric Lee, and I think this is the reason that we need to keep in good contact and good working relationships. I told him what was going on. He said they're willing to do anything they have to to make sure that our water stays where it is. So I, I was very impressed with that. Um, it was just, hopefully, when I get done with the meeting and go back up there, most of it will be done. But it's been a long day. Shout out to my DPW crew because they, they did a heck of a job. It's been a hot day up there, too. Extremely hot. You can tell by my forehead. <laughs> um, and the other thing I want to say, I want to give another good shout out to the DPW crew. Last night's parade, me being a four, uh, four member, I think without having prayed the last two years, it brought tons and tons of people up. We've never seen that many people for a parade, and everybody was so confused. I would say by 7.30 this morning, the roads, State Street and Boswick were just covered with garbage and everything by 7.30, 8 o'clock this morning. The, my DPW crew had everything picked up, swept, and the town looked great. So, guys are doing a heck of a job. Very proud to call my employees. So, other than that, that's it. Anybody wants to go see the water machine break? Come with me. Okay, I'll, I'll pass this around. I forgot to say it when I was talking earlier. I thought this was pretty nice. Um, as you know, one of our streets that we paved this year was Campbell Street. And we literally got a, thank you, 
car from everybody on that street. Evil, isn't it? So take a look at that. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that, would you? Uh, Capital Future Planning. Uh, so, oh. when things simmer down, my, my thoughts on Capital Future Planning is that we develop something with a one five year, and the, the committee itself wouldn't need to be on the agenda every month because once we do that, so we just follow that once a year and, and, and we're set from there. So, with everything going on in the fall, I think Paul and I, should go and whoever, we get together, have something that we can say we truly have and be done with it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. You know, this is Camel Street. Island, not Camel Street, I'm not Island, Island, Island Ave, Church I'm sorry. Street. Island Ave, Church Street. <laughs> I misspoke. <laughs> you can sign it. Anything on personnel? No. Finance. Uh, we Chuck and I did the audit for the month of May. Uh, yes, May. So we're up to date with that. We just have the one that came on this month for June to do. Uh, other than that, where everything is good as far as that goes. Uh, May is on fire department. I attended the meeting uh, in June, and not much really happened. It was one day meeting. I think uh, we're lucky to have the fire department we have. Uh, we discussed the the department briefly, and uh, <coughs> hopefully the fire department is going to do a couple things on our movie night. But, uh, and right now, it's just been kind of on the status quo. That's all I have in front of her. Planning board, zoning board? Uh, I was traveling that meeting, but I uh, got correspondence, nothing really major to report. Municipal board? No, I missed the meeting this month because we have a family emergency. Tell. That's tomorrow. Tell. Nothing. I haven't had any real direct discussions with um, double play on that, but it looks like everything is moving along. We've gotten, uh, I'll get the numbers and see how we are, but I think everything's been working pretty well for that. I got, a, I got a, something on recreation there. Though. Basically, you know, Mike Young and his staff, Bob Mullen from the town and myself, um, went after uh, some grants for the rec program. We were successful. Basically, uh, we were looking at the skates at the skating program. They were in pretty bad shape, so we wanted to upgrade the skates. So we uh, uh, asked for money to upgrade the skates and uh, for the winter rec program. And for that, from the youth, Sports and Educational Opportunity Funding, we received a grant of $5,977 to, to go towards that winter program. Uh, on our summer rec program, we put in for uh, it's a 2022 county projects funds. So this is separate than what we've been talking with on the county. We received uh, $6,577 to go towards our summer rec program. So that's going to help offset those costs. We wanted to extend the free skating at the uh, fairgrounds this winter. And so we put in for a grant to help cover the salaries for that. And we received $1,000 to go towards that. So I just wanted to report that. It's going to be going towards our recreation program. Okay, we had the rental newsletter, but if anybody got anything else on that they want to talk about. If not, I guess it brings us down to public comment. Anything? Yes. anything? My partner crime's not here. I think we missed the police department liaison. Did I? Not yet. Yeah, I, I mean, I talked with Mr. Randy this week. He has nothing really going on, but the report was in the file. Yeah, I talked with him. The big thing he wanted was what we just went over on that dog control. Here, so. Anybody have anything for executive session? And if not, 
You mean motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? All right.